so far, we've been using the features that are baked into the Python language. The basic statements like if, for, while, or the definition of functions or classes are part of the language and ready for us to use whenever we need them. The same goes for integers, floats, strings, lists, and dictionaries. They're all part of the basic Python language because they're used so often. Of course, this isn't enough to get interesting things done. We'll need a lot of additional tools, like being able to send packets over the network, read files from our machine, process images, or who knows what you might want to do to make your work more effective. To organize the code we need to perform tasks like these, Python provides an abstraction called a module. Modules can be used to organize functions, classes, and other data together in a structured way. Internally, modules are set up through separate files containing the necessary classes and functions. Python already comes with a bunch of ready-to-use modules, and all these modules are contained in a group called the Python Standard Library. Let's see how we can use some of them. First, we'll use the import keyword to import the random module. This module is useful for generating random numbers or making random choices. Now that we've imported the module, let's use a function provided by this module called randint. This function receives two parameters and generates a random number between the two parameters that we pass. In this case, we're generating a random number between 1 and 10. As you can see, this function returns different numbers each time it's called. Pretty fun, right? The syntax used for calling a function provided by a module is similar to calling a method provided by a class. It uses a dot to separate the name of the module and the function provided by that module. Let's try using a different module the date time module. We use this for handling dates and times. And now, let's get the current date. If you're wondering why we have a double date time, it's because the date time module provides a date time class. And the datetime class gives us a method called now. This now method generates an instance of the datetime class for the current time. We can operate on this instance of datetime in a bunch of ways. Let's check out a couple of examples. When we call print with an instance of the datetime class, we see the date printed in a specific format. Behind the scenes, the print function is calling the str method of the datetime class, which formats it in the way that we see here. We can also access the instance through its attributes and methods. For example, we can look at the individual parts of the date, like the year, like this. The datetime module provides more classes than the datetime class. For example, we can use the time delta class to calculate a date in the future or in the past. Let's try this out. In this case, we're creating an instance of the time delta class with a value of 28 days. Then we're adding it to the instance of the date time class that we already had and printing out the result. There's a lot more things available in the date time and random modules. If you're interested in learning more, you can read the whole reference. It's available online and we'll include a link in the next reading. This is just a sneak peek into what you could do with modules. You can also develop your own. We'll talk more about that in a later course. For now, just focus on using existing Python modules.